hear the one about Oli and Lena, the Norwegian farmers? Oh, you know, times were tough. And Oli and Lena were in debt and they were close to losing the farm, don't you know? They prayed together one night asking God to, that if they could please win the lottery and use the winnings to save the farm. Well, the next week the winning numbers were drawn and announced and Oli and Lena didn't win the lottery. They lost the farm. It left Oli wondering if God even cared. It left Lena wondering if maybe they should have bought a ticket. Hello and welcome to the Will Preach for Food podcast. I'm Doug, a pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church based out of Shelton, Washington, a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. You can learn more about faith at our website, www.faithshelton.org. I want to thank you for listening today. You know, prayer is such a central practice of the Christian faith. I decided I should preach about it today. I told God I need a really good sermon about prayer. Good luck with that, he said. He'd better get to work on it. (laughs) So here you go. Today's podcast is for the fourth Sunday in Lent, March 27th, 2022. The title of this podcast is Pray Continually. I want to share a few general principles of prayer based in the Bible, examples of Jesus and Daniel and Paul. We'll end with some specific takeaways for you and your own prayer life in the coming days and weeks. But we start with Jesus. Please open your Bible to Luke chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Skipping ahead to verse 9, Jesus goes on, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you, for everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, he asks, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Sorry about the dog there. Jesus teaches that we are to pray to God as though we're talking to a loving father or mother. Martin Luther emphasizes this relationship in his explanation of the Lord's Prayer in the small catechism. God wants to attract us, Luther writes, so that we come to believe that he is truly our father and we are truly his children. In order that we may ask God boldly and with complete confidence, just as loving children ask their loving father. Now, think about how much we as parents want to give our kids good gifts. No, really, we do. We love our kids. We want them to have nice things. How much more, Jesus says, does the Heavenly Father want to give us the Holy Spirit when we ask for it, he says. Ask for what you want, Jesus says, because God wants you to ask. Approach God as though she were your mother, trustworthy, kind, loving. Climb up into her lap where it's safe. Now, here's the thing. Mommies and daddies don't always give us what we want. As daddies and mommies, we know that we can't give our kids everything that they want. We can't take away the pain of a scraped knee or a broken marriage. There will always be bullies at school and bullies in international affairs. Cancer happens. The mortality rate among human beings continues to hover right around 100%. God could make things different. God could do different things differently, but doesn't. And we don't know why that is. We don't know why God answers some prayers and doesn't answer other prayers. I know it's hard. And I know, and what Jesus teaches is that we can, in the end, we can only trust that somehow God holds it all in God's mercy and power. And that we're to trust that God loves us, holds us, and is always working for our good, you know, like, like a father, like a mother. 
So Jesus, when he's in Gethsemane, right before his arrest, he prays, Dad, take this cup of suffering from me. And then he goes on to say, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, Dad. Your grace is enough for me. Now, a second teaching in this passage about prayer is that sometimes the answer to prayer takes time. And it takes work on our part. Ask and you will receive, well and good. But then it says this, seek and you will find. Now, as parents, we know the, the damage we can do to our children if we always give them everything that they want, if they never have to work for anything. So seek and you will find, Jesus teaches. Go after it, pursue your dreams, learn stuff, take classes from the school of hard knocks, fail often and fabulously. Develop skills and muscles and calluses and character. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Part of a life of prayer is to be ready to look for opportunities, to take chances and to walk through some doors, to seize the day, to carpe the diem. And yes, um, we ask and then we do the work of seeking and finding and knocking and door opening. Some good gifts that God wants to give us are long-term projects. We overestimate what we can accomplish in the short term, and we definitely underestimate what God can accomplish in the long term. I think back a few years, I remember I was turning about 40. I began to ask God to give me the gift of wisdom. Uh, I thought it would sort of come naturally with age, but in fact, I noticed that discernment and leadership was getting harder with age, not easier. So God, make me wise, I began to pray. About a month after my 40th birthday, I sprained my ankle playing church league softball. (laughs) A couple years later, a woman I had never met, never met her before, gave me a piece of paper. It had a Bible verse handwritten on it, and it happened to be James 3.17, which says this, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. I carried that Bible verse with me for the next several years, and, and over the, the next decade of, of my life, uh, there, was so much, there was change and transition. There was a lot of disappointment, a fair amount of shame, a lot of repentance. I ended up doing hospice work. I was doing a lot of parenting, And I was praying. And now, 15 years or so after the fact, I think that maybe I am a bit wiser than I was then. I'm certain that I'm less of a jerk now than I was 15 years ago, which for some of you simply indicates just how much of a jerk I was at one time. (laughs) I don't, let me say this, I don't think it's helpful to try and say that everything happens for a reason. I do think that God the Father wants to give us good gifts and that when we're trusting God, when we're asking for what we want, when we're willing to say yes to God, and then when we're willing to do the work of seeking and knocking, that this is what the Bible means when it says that God works all things together for good. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is not yet. Sometimes the answer is wait for it. Second Bible story, story of Daniel. The Bible records a prayer to Yahweh, the God of Israel, prayed by the prophet Daniel on behalf of his people. They were under siege from the enemy. Daniel chapter 9, beginning at verse 17, says this. This is part of the prayer. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay. Now, it's hard to maybe catch the nuance, but do you you hear Daniel? His appeal is to God's mercy, to God's goodness. He says, don't listen to us because we're righteous, but listen to us because of your great mercy. This prayer underscores the understanding that that, uh, prayer is about God's goodness 
and not about the prayer's goodness or even the goodness of the prayer, right? See, some people still approach prayer like a a spell at Hogwarts, right? You have to say the right thing the right way with a certain flick of the wrist and presto, reality is altered for the desired outcome. Prayer is some kind of a magic uh, formula or incantation. Other people think that prayer is about showing God how religious they are. So they try to bribe the gods with displays of devotion or piety or with expressions of political or theological purity, willing to sacrifice their children if they think that it can get them what they want. But Daniel teaches us that prayer is about God, not about us. Prayer isn't about my righteousness or performance or faith or doctrine or formula. Prayer is about God's righteousness, God's mercy. We do not make our requests of you, God, because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy, he prays. So God wants us to pray, commands us to pray, not according to our merits, but according to God's mercy. So if you think about it, there's no such thing as being good at praying, because prayer is about God, not about you or me. The third Bible story comes from Paul. The Apostle Paul adds, um, adds this principle about prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 is one of the shortest and therefore easiest to memorize verses in the whole Bible. Pray continually, it says. That's the whole verse. Pray continually. Which is to say that all of us are invited into a life of prayer. Prayer is not optional or only for certain people or only for certain occasion. Prayer is not something that you do or say. It's a way of life. It's a relationship with God and ultimately a relationship with others and with the world. A life of prayer, a a prayerful way of life, is a life in regular communication with the God who created you, who loves you, has a purpose for your life. Prayer is part talking to God and part listening to God. It's an ongoing conversation. Like the old song says, God walks with me, talks with me, and tells me that I am his own. A delightful teacher named Brennan Manning was once asked about his frequent silent retreats, what he gets out of them. Manning explained that he doesn't go on a silent treat with an agenda. I just figure that Jesus wants me to spend some time with him, he says. A life of prayer is about being in relationship with God. I think about it this way. I love being with my wife, Brenda. I love listening to her talk about her day. I know that she wants to hear about my day. And I love being with her even when we don't have anything to say. And this is the nature of a relationship with God, a a, a praying continually relationship with God when talking and listening to God is, is a delight and it's second nature, even when neither one of us has much to say. Prayer as a way of life has two other benefits. One benefit has to do with our life with others. Prayer unites the people of God, unites the people of faith, unites the church. We share times together for worship and liturgy and intercessions. We practice confession. We practice forgiveness. We encourage one another, speaking the very words of God to one another. We listen to each other as though we're listening to the voice of God. We learn and recite prayers that have been prayed by the communion of saints, further connecting us as God's people over the centuries, past, future, and present. So prayer benefits our life together, and prayer puts us in right relationship with our world. Think about it this way. When we are intent on listening to God, we are more inclined to turn off the other voices, like the peacock or the fox. When we're in constant conversation with God, when we're talking with God on a regular basis, then we are less prone to saying hurtful things to or about others. We are more grounded, we are more thoughtful, we are more loving, we are more like Jesus. 
This is wisdom, right? Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is the wisdom that comes from heaven. First of all, pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Let me leave you with uh, three or four takeaways. The first one is this. It's not too late to start a life of prayer. Now, just a few places you can start. If you've never prayed before or that's not your thing in the past, uh, start today. Uh, and start by taking a walk or creating some other space for there to be quiet and listening to God. It means turning off the TV. It means maybe including a, a mantra prayer like, God is merciful. Jesus loves me. The Lord is my shepherd. Take a phrase like that and let that, that phrase permeate your walk. And then look around and just notice Listen for, look for God speaking to you. And while you're at it, go ahead and talk to God about what you're feeling, about what you're thinking, about what you want. Another way to approach this is, is by journaling or, or writing a letter to God. Just start, take a piece of paper, say, Dear God, or I suppose it's an email now on your computer, but just write a Dear God letter. Tell God where you're at, what you hope for. Maybe what you're angry about, what you're hopeful for. Ask God for what you want. And then invite God to speak to you. And maybe you make a commitment or two to coming back to the table and listening and speaking with God on a regular basis. So going for a walk, creating some silent time, writing a letter to God, that's another good place. And another way to start is to pray with others. Join or, or start a prayer group. We've got several of them uh, connected to our church here. Um, you could begin a faith five practice in your household. We have uh, resources about that at our website. But find ways with other people to practice being in the presence of God, to practice prayer. And a fourth way that you could start a life of prayer would be simply to reach out to a Christian friend and ask them to, to mentor you. Or maybe you could even reach out to your pastor because, you know, your pastor is really wise. <laughs> so it's not too late to start a life of prayer. Second thing, approach God in prayer as you would a loving father or mother. Here's the thing. Don't get hung up on trying to pray right. Any more than you could crawl up onto your mother's lap wrong. It just That's not how it works. God wants God wants you there. God wants to listen. God wants to hold you and let you know that you are loved. Third thing, think about it this way. Let answered prayer be an invitation to experience and express the tender mercies of God and let unanswered prayer be an invitation to experience and express the tender mercies of God. And finally, if you don't manage to do any of these prayer takeaways, you are still loved by God, still held in God's tender mercies. Amen? Amen. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you, Chaz, for helping every week produce this podcast. Thank you, people of faith, for praying for me and with me. Our website, www.faithshelton.org, has resources for prayer, for how to grow closer to and more like Jesus, for ways to connect with the larger faith community. Hope you will, if you go to the website, sign up for our weekly emails or like us on Facebook. You can make a financial donation to Faith or uh, even subscribe to the We'll Preach for Food podcast. I hope this has been helpful for your life of prayer. And I hope this podcast brings glory and honor to God. I leave you with a blessing from the end of 1 Thessalonians. Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.